Hello and welcome back to Applied Advanced Calculus. My name is Nathaniel Posizorski and today we are going to be looking at Stokes' theorem. Let's jump into it. So for Stokes' theorem, what it states is that the closed integral of f dr is equal to the double integral of the curl of f times n times ds. So here's a general rule of thumb. If you're asked to find the closed integral of FDR, or generally they'll say evaluate the closed integral of FDR, do the double integral of the curl of F times N times DS. If you're asked to evaluate the double integral of curl of F times N times DS, well then simply do the closed integral of FDR. And if you are asked to prove Stokes' theorem, do both. Let's look at an example. So over here, they are asking us to verify Stokes' theorem for the f is equal to e to the y minus z as an x component, 0 and 0 for the y and z components of this vector, and it's oriented with an upward pointing normal, and the square with vertices 302, 332, 032, and 002. Well, first, let's give these vertices and letters each to represent them. So we're going to name them A, B, C, and D. Then we could also realize that the Z value is the same for every vertice. It's 2. So let's just set the aside for now. Now we're going to look from A to B. What stays the same and what changes from A to B? Well, from A to B, X is always equal to 3 and Y varies from 0 to 3. From B to C, however, Y is always equal to 3 and X varies from 3 to 0. C to D, X is always equal to 0 and Y varies from 3 to 0. And d to a, y is equal to 0, and x varies from 0 to 3. Now, one important uh, aspect to, uh, to notice is that f dr is going to be the vector of f times a vector with dx, dy, dz as their x, y, z components. When you do the dot product of that, it gives us e with the exponent y minus z dx. Then, if we look at what we found for A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A, we could realize that for A, B, and C, D, their x values are constant, which means that the dx values are going to be equal to zero. So when we are going to be uh, evaluating the closed integral, the A, B, and C, D values are simply going to be equal to zero. So the closed integral is going to be the closed integral of B, C, plus the closed integral of dA. For BC, x values from 3 to 0, and we are going to plug in the y value of 3, then minus 2 for the z, dx, which gives us minus 3e. You could simply do the same logic for uh, dA, and you get 3e to the minus 2, and the closed integral is then going to be 3 times minus e plus e, to the minus 2. We solved half of the problem, but they asked us at the beginning to verify Stokes' theorem. Thus, we have to also do the method with curl. So let's calculate the curl of f. Over here, we are going to plug in our z equals 2 value, and we are going to calculate the curl, which gives us a vector of 0, 0, and minus e with the exponent y minus 2. Now, we know that z is equal to 2, and we know that z is also known as fxy. Based on that, we could calculate ds, which is normally square root of 1 plus di f over di x squared plus di f over di y squared. In this case, di f over di x and di f over di y are simply going to be equal to 0, so our di s is going to be 1 da. Then, we know that if we move the 2 to the left side, 
we could find f x y z is equal to z minus 2. If we then do the gradient of this, we could find our n to be 0, 0, and 1. And we're almost done. Now all we have left to do is do the double integral of our curl f times n times ds. For our dA, we are going to plug in dx dy. And we know that our x values and our y values vary from 0 to 3. We could then calculate this double integral. And it gives us 3 times minus e plus e to the minus 2. Since our answer is the same as the answer we got on top, we just verified Stokes' theorem. So I hope this was helpful in better understanding Stokes' theorem. If it was, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.